Welcome to the box, people. Woo, woo. It's got Sunny, <laughs> Tina, and Lulu. Hey. And we have an interesting day for you guys today. We are off to a great start, and we are all super excited. Okay, so <laughs> I was going to start off with something creepy. It is officially October, October 1st, well, for us in America. And um, so I wanted to share the story. So my son is dating this really cute um, uh, girl named Taylor. And Taylor is a kidney transplant recipient. She fought cancer, um, which is how she lost her kidney function. And so anyway, she gives Tyler this purple dinosaur. And it's just this fluffy little thing, okay? And he had it in his room on his desk, not where anyone could get to it. When I say anyone, I mean David. We all know little toddler David. And my dog Myers, who likes to steal everything, okay? And uh, including hots. And so anyway, so Tyler comes to me. It's late at night. Well, late at night for me, it was like 8.45. No, I'm just kidding. It was like 10.30. And he's knocking on my door and he's like, mom, I cannot find the dinosaur. And at first I'm like, you haven't played with dinosaurs since you were two. Okay, so anyway, so (laughs) I help him. We are looking for this thing. He's looked under his bed, which I'm sure he found all kinds of goodies under there because it's been a while. He looked all through his sheet, everything. We are looking for this thing, cannot find this thing. I text Mariah. And I say, is there any chance you saw David with the purple dinosaur? And she's like, you got to talk to your dog because it wasn't me. And so anyway, so well, Myers can't talk. And so anyway, so the next morning, I'm like, I'm going to go look in the backyard. I'm going to do this. And I'm kind of irritated about it. Now, if you know me, you know that I believe that my house has something going on in it. You do? Um, which, which I'm not, you will write it now, which I'm not afraid of it. Like, I'm like, you don't live here like you ain't paying no rent get out and so anyway so long story short I walk out of my room yesterday morning for all of like maybe 45 seconds I shut my door still having to keep Myers and Daisy separated the shepherds I shut my door go grab them to come right back in my room all three the three dogs that are inside my room are sitting like near my tv which is like oh like directly across from my bed And all three of them have their backs to the wall and they're staring at my bed. All three of them sitting there staring at my bed. Sitting directly in the middle of the bed is the purple dinosaur, which would not be in my room because I don't play with those kind of toys, right? And so anyway, the (laughs) dinosaur is sitting right in the middle. And I grab, I take a picture and I send it to Tyler and I'm like, found it. And he's like, well, where was it? And I go, it was in the middle of my bed, which is completely freaking me out. So here's the thing. The dog toy, or the toy wasn't ripped. Had Myers had a hold of it or any of the other dogs, it would have been shredded. Okay. Number two, it wasn't wet. Had Myers had a hold of it, that whole toy would have been like gross. And you would have seen the dog like spittle all over it. Okay. Nothing like that. It's now back in Tyler's room. I put it behind the TV. Don't take it if it's the ghost. And so anyway, so that's my f- f- freaky, yeah? Um, yes, you in the corner. Did you, did you ever come to think that the ghost helped you? It was lost in like a really- I do thing. think that. Here's another thing, reason why. Mariah had a dream after, so I text her late at night, 8 foot of five. So I text her and I say, hey, have you seen the dinosaur? The next morning I go to her house to drop something off. And I'm like, I got a story for you. And she's like, no, I have to tell you my dream about that purple dinosaur. And she says that my kitchen table, you guys don't know it. I could take a picture and send it to you. Uh, Sure, you guys are very curious. And so anyway, the table, she said she's over there in the dream and she lifts it up. And underneath that table, it turned into like almost like a room, almost like a gigantic box, but something you could like walk into. And she said, sitting in there next to a bunch of random stuff was the purple dinosaur. And I said, I wonder if what you saw was the room the ghost keeps putting everything in. So all my random stuff that's been missing since we moved in here, I think, it doesn't matter. And so anyway, might have everything in it. Like I said, I wonder if that's where all my stuff is. Like there's a lot of socks in there, I'll tell you right now. And so anyway, so crazy right that's to me that's even more creepy 
So I just want to say thank you if you took it and you brought it back. I appreciate you. And so anyway, so I just my socks, to... can I get those too? Yeah. <laughs> I'm still missing a bra. I don't... So, uh, so that, okay. So yes, that happened the other day. So we're going to go. yesterday. The last day of November. Or did it uh. Oh no, that would have been September. Yes. <laughs> I know my calendar. Don't worry. <laughs> So now we're passing it over to Lulu. Who yes. Just talk very angrily. So just stay with us. <laughs> I know. I'm going to try to not make it like so much upset. But okay. So last wait. Okay. So there was having Grey's Anatomy episode for season 18, the first one. And they made it sound like it was like such an amazing crossover episode with Station 19, okay? So right. when you said it's crossover, that means like you see character in both show, right? Like literally a normal crossover. Okay, well, what they call crossover is literally like both show next to each other without like really link. Like, okay, there was one story who was like in both show but it wasn't really crossover. So I was like, how, why you call it crossover? It's not a crossover. <laughs> so it wasn't really a crossover? No, not at all. Hmm. So I was hmm. like, okay, so you lied to us for the first episode. Okay. So, and after, okay, I was really upset about that because that, like, I think, okay, so already season 17 was, like, kind of okay, but not, like, that much. Like, people already complain about it. And the third season, okay, a little spoiler in case, because I don't know how I'm going to write it, so just in case. So they start that episode with, like, Meredith flirting with two guys. Two. Two. And I'm like, Okay, first of all, we are talking about Meredith Grey, who literally doesn't need a man, just to be clear. Like, she is okay by herself. And now, you want us to be okay with her, like, jumping the relationship in relationship like she did in the beginning of the show who like she was like okay because it was the beginning she was a baby yes okay i used to watch Grey's anatomy all the time so i understand what you're saying but here's the thing did you say she was just flirting with them well okay so she said she was dating before the guy like the first one and then she said that to the second guy that she's flirting with so she just stopped that in the first one. and She's already flirting with someone else. Okay, so she's sleeping with somebody but flirting with another guy. Kind of, yeah. That's right. She was dating the guy with the kids, but that didn't work out, right? Well, it did work out, but the kid wasn't okay with that. So they kind of stopped it. So you're... Now, I talked to Lulu for a few minutes after the show, and she was livid. So the thing that angered you most was the fact that they're already throwing Meredith into a relationship. Yeah, that. And like also, like, it's the first episode. Like, so, okay, just to be clear, the last episode of season 17 was like, so all the season 17 was about COVID. And the last, like, the last episode of it was like, they, like, past uh, all year in one episode like they skip one year like all year like they did one year in one episode who was like like already like confusing and like this episode was starting like a year after that like the, the last episode okay so that that's confusing <laughs> and then it was like so and like so it's, they kind of like forget about COVID, like they like move on for that. But like the point I don't get is like, so they like changing a lot of things. And like, it's confusing because like, first of all, they kind of want, like they kind of do like, Meredith's gonna leave the hospital she's working in. And I think it's kind of bullshit, like to make people think that. Because, because like literally like, 
if she's leaving the hospital, like, there is not great anatomy because she Lulu. won't be. Lulu, Lulu, Lulu. <clears throat> what is it that you want? Tell people what you want out of this season. Well, okay, so obviously, well, like, kind of like well now now that Kate Walsh is coming back, and so that she is? is coming back. Yeah, and Addison is coming back too. Then she apparently coming back in episode three, and we did get like. And how do you know that, Lulu? Uh, it's uh, all over Twitter. Oh, okay. So. There is a picture that shows that Meredith and uh, Addison are gonna operate together. Yes. <laughs> Question. You watched all the seasons of the show? I did. Okay, so you're a fan of Denny, Denny Duquette? Yeah, I was okay. <laughs> okay, because I think we should do a full episode on Denny Duquette. Yeah. I I I throw it in there. Please yield your time. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Kate character was good though. Like it was really good. So Don't you but you want Addison and uh uh Meredith and Endgame, correct? Well, I mean like I prefer like okay, so there is two and I want for Meredith. Okay. But either way she's single because like I'm so tired of seeing her with man every freaking time and she's never the same man. So it's annoying. Or with Addison, that's the two options I'm okay with. Wait, either with Addison or alone. Yeah. Well, she has three kids, so anyway, she's not alone. Well, yeah. and she has sister. Like she's living with her no, sister. No, 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 no. Um, you know, like she's like all her house is like she's living with her, her sisters in it. No, no, so. no. That's a good point. You're right, Lulu. You're no. A relationship does not define a woman. You're right. I, I just meant alone, as in, like, relationship-wise. You would rather her be single. Well, not all that in a woman, but, like, not a man. Like, Wait, you like, want her dating a woman, any woman, or you pr- probably well, want... Well, I want Addison, for sure. Okay. But, you, like, you have yeah. chemistry. Yeah. All right, you want to wrap it up? You got about a minute left if you want to... Uh... Well, like, literally, just, like... I don't want her uh, with a man anymore. Like, I think we already seen uh, a lot with a man. Well, but like, they kind of make us believe, like, in some point with Sadie, like, back in season five, six, I think, when Sadie was there, that Sadie and her uh, had a thing in Europe when they was like studying because they do the college thing. So, who knows? Medicine. Medicine. Team medicine. Yeah. Does anyone have anything to say about that before we move over to Chris? I think Addison is gorgeous, so I can understand uh, Lulu's uh, feelings on it. Chris, you're up next. Uh, Law and order. Okay. Dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Law and order. Um, Christopher Maloney being undercover is a bit of a badass in this um, these these episodes, um, killing people. Um, so that's pretty cool. And he also brings a bazooka to a um, big mass gathering of um, the, the mob. Nice. At a party. Nice. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so especially at a, at a petrol station, he takes a, a bazooka to a petrol station. Yeah. G- gas station, sorry. That's uh, probably gas. not safe. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, you shouldn't even smoke a cigarette, let alone bring a bazooka. But no, no. Don't use a cell phone at a gas station. And also, you, you also see Christopher Money without a top of his shirt on, um, digging a big, massive mess. I mean, tell me the mess, uh, the season and episode, please. <laughs> he's, he's still pretty, hot, he's still pretty hot for his age, so it's pretty, it's, it's, it's good to, and he's also growing a nice beard. So there's a big, um, issue with people saying that they don't like the beard, but I don't mind it, especially. As he is um, supposed to be undercover, so I agree with you. I don't. I think the beard beard suits him, and I think he's aging like a fine wine, Chrissy. He is. He's, and he can still bring the goods. So <laughs> the guns, the guns, bringing him to the show. So um, it's, it's still a great show to um, 
still keep on watching. So, but see, I have a question. Um, these uh, episodes you're talking about, the newest season or? Oh, Law and Order Organized Crime, yeah. They actually have a crossover, Lulu. They actually work. They, um, they have characters that were in the original show that went into the uh, the new show the other the new show so it kind of no way away. when when did that happen uh three three episodes ago and you didn't catch up yet you haven't seen the most recent episode <sighs> we don't know if they actually hooked up then last night i don't think so i don't anyway so but uh, it's looking it's it's look it's looking like it could be a hookup I'm going to ask you the same thing I asked Lulu, uh, Chrissy. What is it that you want out of this season of... Uh... Ah, that's a good question. Um, I- I'm on the fence with... Um, I-, I-, I rather than just get it on already and then maybe sep- go their separate ways or actually hook up. So you ship married. them. Fun? You ship them. You're a shipper. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy either way. I mean, it'd be great for them to get it on and actually have a a, a proper relationship, but it's kind of not looking like it could be. I don't think it's going to really happen. Is um is there is there anything um I don't know if you want to keep this law and order uh, based. I can take this part out. But is there any other work that you, you want to talk about that maybe is coming out for Christopher Maloney or? Because you got about, uh, what is it, Sonny? Another three, four minutes? Uh, Let's pretend I know. You got another three minutes. I don't know if there's anything that he's coming out. Uh, coming out at the moment. <laughs> and that sounds a bit dirty. So I'm sorry. Um, no. I don't think there's anything. Do you, have you heard anything? No, you live, I, you, I go you live to, over there. I don't know anything. You I are go a place for Christopher Maloney news. Chris. Oh, just to add, though, maybe while you're thinking about it, Sonny actually sent Chrissy from California to Australia a magazine where Christopher Maloney was on the cover of U.S. Men's Health. Is that correct? Men's Health, yeah. And it's, it's perfectly it's wrapped in nice. plastic and put away, so it's never going to get... Dirty or smudged or yeah, Chrissy, the pages are still intact. <laughs> are any of them yes. stitched together, Chrissy? No. <laughs> I think I have to cut that out. That's too much for the box. <laughs> and for me. Not for Chris's box. Oh my god. <laughs> cut! Cut. But uh, overall, I highly Highly recommend watching Law and Order: Organized Crime. It's a great show, and it's got a good story base and a lot of action. It's got a good base. Is that what you said? Yeah, baseline and good twist and turns. Twist and turn. Okay. Yeah, I'm down for that twist and turning. Uh, anyone have any questions for Chrissy? Chrissy, you want to wrap it up with anything? Or um, I love Christopher Maloney. No. Yeah, I do. You do? He can't do anything wrong. He's no. That's it. That I was a uh, rush. I would like to take a moment to thank uh Lulu and Chrissy uh because they are in crazy time zones and we miss yeah. them. They can't always be together on the show. Chrissy got up extra early. She has to go to work and Lulu stayed up extra late, even though she ain't got to do tomorrow. I already beat myself. You see that? That's how you do it, girl. <laughs> Save me on editing. Um, so thank you, girls. Um, you know, Sonny's just over there relaxed, you know, Saturday. Yeah, it's totally cool. I'm not gonna thank her and her stupid ghost. Yeah, it's fine. I'm afraid of it's middle of the day in California, it's fine. So Sonny, uh, before I talk, because I'm still not sure what I'm gonna talk about, can you tell us this story? You guys have to hear this. I think this is extremely important. I was having a coffee craving and I decided to go to, we have a brand new Dutch Brothers over on the corner. And so I decided to go and I was in the line and this cute, really super thin young girl comes up to me. um, And I remember thinking, gosh, she's so small. Like 
anyone could just like kind of grab her up. And I remember literally thinking that <laughs> when Ashley was taking my order. And I notice as she's taking my order, I glance up and I notice there's a work truck in front of me and I'm not going to name the company of the truck. I do have all the information in my phone. Um, but I notice that he has his camera and he's like leaning out his window and he's taking pictures. Like, so I can see on his little screen as it's popping up, I can see the young girl popping up on his screen as he's snapping pictures. So clearly he's taking pictures of her. Right. And you know, I'm a mom. And so, um, I just know if it was, you know, my child out there, something was going on, I'd want someone to say something. And so it just kind of freaked me out because the thing is her and I, um, engage in like a brief conversation, um, super sweet, you know, uh, uh, a young girl, she could have been more than like maybe 18, 19 years old. And as she goes behind me, she's taking somebody's order and this guy is still taking pictures of her. So it's not just like one or two pictures. It is several pictures. It had to be at least three, four dozen just in the time that I was sitting there. Because like my phone, for instance, if you take a picture, there's it like it does this little like the picture shows up right away, but it like does like a little flash. So, you know, it's at the picture and his was constantly doing that. And it really bothered me. So the first thing I did is my friend Mariah, I sent her a text and I put in his work truck number. So that's specific to that company. So I wrote the um, company name down and I put that like that number that's specific to his truck in it. And so anyway, so when I got up to the window, because the young girl, I was kind of hoping like less people were going to be in the drive through and she was going to walk up and I can say, hey, just be aware this guy's watching you. And so anyway, so when I got up to the window, I told um, the young lady that was there went on and then I gave her all the information I had. Um, and then the manager came over and I gave them the information. Uh, but it was kind of like that creepy feeling you get. I'm sure we've all been in situations where you know in your gut that something's wrong. Um, and I just felt that like to my core, I felt it like something's wrong. It's not okay. This is a, this is a young lady. And this was like, I can tell even looking into the vehicle that this was a, like a bigger, bigger dude that he could have easily, you know, he could have easily picked her up. Right. And so it just kind of scared me for her. Um, and so anyway, so I, I it didn't end there. Which part are you talking about? When you were leaving the parking lot. Oh, he was still there. So the, the, the manager said, is that him right there? And I said, yeah, that's him. So they have these different windows on the, on the building. Oh, and what did you do? Okay. So back when I was doing the take fun dough, I told you guys before, then I was um, working with Dave Young, um, who is, he teaches you all these things, all these techniques in order to protect yourself and to protect others. Um, so when I went by, I drove by his vehicle very slow and I let it be known that I was staring at him. Um, so when you do that, what it does is it knocks them out of their confidence zone when you do that to a predator. So when you do that to a predator, you're letting them know I'm watching you. And the very last thing a predator wants is to be seen or heard. Um, so by doing that, I was hoping to have knocked them off kilter enough that he, you know, that, that he wasn't going to try anything. Um, so anyway, I just think it's important to, to be aware of things like that because you never know who, you know, you just don't, we just don't know. When Sonny told me that I was extremely proud of her. First of all, the see something, say something, I think is super important because maybe God forbid, maybe Sonny didn't do that. She sees the same girl now missing on the news. Like she could have made a real difference. And Sonny also told me um, that when you stare at like a predator like that and you're letting them know that most predators are weak cowards. So a simple stare can kind of deter them. So the fact that Sonny had the foresight to uh, not only let management know what was going on, write down the number to this truck stare this creep in the eye, potentially probably most likely save this girl's life.
I'm not being dramatic. I'm not saying that something would have definitely happened. But the chances are that something might have happened that Sonny stopped it. So the moral of the story is be alert, be aware. Uh, I myself, even going through a drive through keep my doors locked because yeah. people come up to you. And I'm going to tell a quick story, quick story. It's kind of opposite of Sonny, but I think it's, it fits the theme and it's important. I didn't tell you guys this, but uh, two weeks ago, my mother and I were going to the store like we do every weekend, kill me. And uh, <clears throat> we're driving on the service road of a highway and we see uh, someone laid out next to a bicycle on the cement by a building. So I stopped, I, I pulled over, I stopped and it's an older man, maybe in his early sixties. And uh, I tap him on the back slightly, you know, Hey, Hey, you okay? I thought he was dead, you know, and he gets up and he, he, he looks at me and he had like a bottle of uh, alcohol on the other side of him. He was maybe passed out. So he looks at me and he says, uh, I said, are you okay, sir? And he says, yeah, yeah. He goes, I hate, I hate my life. Just let me, just let me sit here. And he goes, but thank you. Thank you for checking on me. So as I'm walking back to the car, I see my mother holding the crowbar. She must've got out of the trunk. I said, Ma, what are you doing? So I guess you guys would probably say the same thing to me. A lot of these things can be entrapments. Mm -hmm. So the moral of the story is it was probably not the smartest thing, but human nature kicks in. You see someone in trouble and you want to help. Um, but my mom was right. That could have went a different way. It could have went a different, he could have turned around and stabbed me, pulled the gun on me. Again, not being dramatic, well, but the, it wasn't the smartest thing. I could have well, called the, the police. The thing is, is that cowards will, they bank on the fact that people are kind. They bank on the fact that someone's going to say, hey, are you okay? You know, um, especially like they'll go after moms a lot of the time because as moms, you know, even those of us that are maternal will tend to, you know, pull over not too long ago. Um, <clears throat> So you guys all know Bob and I are super tight. Um, and so I was at Target and it's over, it's not the closest one to, to me. It's a little further and um, there's a Ross over there. So, um, <clears throat> so I went into the Target and again, one of the things Dave Young had taught was you have to be aware of your surroundings. And I noticed as I was getting ready to check out and it was only me that day, like it's very rare. Normally I have people with me that day. I had no one. And so when I was checking out, um, getting just a few quick items, I noticed there was a guy and he was standing in the stationary section of all things with just a pair of shorts. And that's odd because most men aren't going to be like, oh, I need to go buy a pair of shorts and let me stop and just stare in the stationary section. It's not a common thing that you're going to see. So like being aware of those things. So anyway, hands up behind me and I say, sir, did you want to go in front of me? And he goes, no, 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 I don't want to go in front of you. And he's a handsome guy, like not bad looking. And I go, okay, well, you know, you know, the offer's there. And so I get my stuff. I check out. Here's the reason someone won't want to go in front of you if they only have one item. And if it is a creep is it's going to take you longer to get your stuff bagged and to walk out to your vehicle. If they walk out behind you, number one, they have a chance to see where your vehicle is. You're putting stuff in your vehicle and they have a quicker opportunity to come up behind you with their vehicle. So keep that in mind. So now I'm out at the thing, um, at my car and I'm putting stuff in the trunk and I see this vehicle goes next to me real slow and I love Jeeps. So I happen to turn cause he's driving a silver Jeep. And so long story short, um, I'm aware of it right off the bat, right? Um, that, that he's there and he's watching. So he is not parked correctly in the parking space, in a parking space. He is like horizontal to like the, like to the parallel space. And he's watching me in a side view mirror. So I get in my vehicle and I immediately, I locked my doors and I called Bob and I said, listen, cause he was off work that day. I said, there is somebody, and I think that, I think that they're going to follow me. 
like I'm a little nervous about it. And, and he was cool. He wasn't a jerk, but he was like, how would you know that? And I said, and it was all these little things that Dave Young had taught me. And so I start driving and sure enough, this guy followed me through side streets, like all kinds of things. And it's only went through when I went through an area where I knew it wasn't easy to get out of. I know how to get out of it, but I knew he may not know that. So I started driving in that area and then I lost him for a little bit. Here's the scary part. I pulled to the side. He pops up out of nowhere. So I did it again through a different section. Bob was like, called me and said, I'm over in this. Or I think we were still on the phone together. He said, I'm over here. Get to this area. As I was driving towards Bob, I don't know if that guy had like a sixth sense. He left, but he had been following me and it was, it was scary. So do just, you think you, you could also drive to a police station? Cause something like that happened yeah. to me. Yeah, absolutely. I highly recommend that drive to a police station you know, do something like that. You call the cops yeah. from the car. That literally has happened to me when I was younger. Yeah. Do not go home. If something like that happens, do not go home because what is going to happen is now they know where you live. So you, you don't want to drive to a friend's house. You don't want to do anything. Get somewhere safe. Sonny, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Don't say long story short. <laughs> Stop it. I love you too. <laughs> I love you girls, but uh, I... I love that you consistently, long story short. I, and then I think, it's a long story. Yeah, yeah. My son. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My truck. <laughs> um, My dog. But thank you for telling us three stories, Sonny. That was great. Well, I was going to make up for the story you never told. <clears throat> <laughs> Anything else you want to say, ladies? Well, with the French girl, like my friends, like when like we go in the street and we are alone, like we used to like call the group, like to be sure to be on call with someone like that. If we get follow, like we are talking on the phone, like most of the time people don't don't follow, like they kind of like left. And I remember like one time I was followed and I like I see the guy like he literally followed me for like two streets. I was working and I, I was like kind of scared. So I called my dad and I. At the second, I said to my dad, I think someone is following me. The guy moved, like he switched the, the other side of the street and he, he, he left. So I was like, so my dad like kind of moved, like he was walking through me, like to find me. And like when he found me, I was like, no, it's fine. I think the guy left. But he was following me. Yeah, I love that. Lulu told me uh, last week, I think it was last week. Yeah. They these girls that met on Twitter, like we met on Twitter, are so amazing. She literally has this group of Twitter friends, and they have a system that if they think they're being followed or they got to walk home alone, they're not comfortable, they call or, or FaceTime each other. And yeah. if you have a bad feeling, there's a reason that um, that intuition has been instilled in all of us, and we should pay attention to that. It was not given to us just by chance. And so anyway, um, be aware so, of it. In, in conclusion, see something, say something, be aware of your surroundings. Don't necessarily fall for helping someone that might really be in trouble. Do it from far away. Call the cops. Um, also, if you're being followed in a car like Sunny, drive to a police station. Don't go home. And uh, do what Lulu and her friends do. Have a buddy system. And, and also what Lulu, what you did was very good. If you announce that, you know, you're being followed, that might be enough to get the creep to, you know, now that you know. So can, and I, can I say one more thing about um, that? Also, yeah, cool. somebody's, somebody's broken, um, broken down on the side of the road. They may not be broken down. They, they, they are waiting for somebody to pull over and yeah, kidnap them. That is like it. Ted Bundy, like Ted Bundy, the way he got his people pretending he had a broken heart, arm and that he needed help. So, you know, and then would handcuff them to, you know, um, inside his vehicle to where, you know, obviously they couldn't get out. I'm a, That's just I, a I, long I'm, story short. Thing. I'm, inter I'm interested that you said that, Chrissy, because uh, these things do happen in Australia as well. Quite often. Yeah. Quite often. So I, I don't know why I always picture Australia as this like Zen country where like bad stuff doesn't. Well, the only thing that's going to get you is a spider. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a beasting. The thing, the, the, yeah, either way. 
And that was our final word. That's our final word, 45 minutes later. Thank you for joining us on another fantabulous episode of The Box, people. And always remember to think outside the box. Box, people. Out. 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 I can't do it because Bus is falling asleep. All right, so you guys. Professional, bro. Love you guys. Have a good one.